Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Explode Your Expert Biz Show. Today, I'm here with the one and the only B.D. Dalton. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you, man? Incredibly well. Thank you very much. Now, quick question before we start. You call yourself a lazy overachiever. What the heck, a, what the heck is this about? Everybody, nobody likes to be called lazy. Nobody likes you. Don't like to be called lazy, do you? No, I'm a hard and working. You're I'm a hard hustler. working. Everybody wants to be hard working. Everybody says, "Oh, I'm hard working. I do this." Let me tell you this: if if I could tell you a way that you could make as much money this year as you did last year, and you'd have to work half as much, would you want to do that? Sign me up. See, that's laziness. Because you just don't want to work as hard as you're working today to do the same thing next year. You just want to work harder and harder and harder and earn the same money, right? No. I'm lazy. I want to figure out the best way, the easiest way, the right way to deal with people, to deal with business, and be very, very lazy by using my time like I want to so I can just kick back, play some hoops, whatever you want to do, but ha have some fun with it. And that's why I call myself a lazy overachiever. I like that. I want to be your friend. I already want to be your friend. So... Uh, now, before we go into talking about the, the topic of the day, which is uh, networking sucks, uh, which is uh, yeah an interesting topic because everyone says to build a business, you need to go networking. That's what everyone says. But you say networking sucks. I'm really curious about that. But before we go into talking about networking, uh, how did you become a, a lazy overachiever? What's your story? Well, I was never really lazy. I just like to get to the point where I can be lazy. But so I built, I, I built a, a business in the States, a financial advice business to this in the States, door knocking. So I knocked on doors to get clients. Um, I, I made a business over there that has about 50 million pounds under management or $50 million under management and got all my clients through door knocking and then referrals. And then I moved over to the UK in 2002, did the same thing here. And I'm American. I mean, you're, you're, you're not originally from England. But, and I'm not originally from England. And, and going out and knocking on somebody's door and asking them for money, how easy was that? That was not, that was not easy. You, you know it was what? not easy at all. You know yeah. what? I, for a period of my life, uh, I worked as a fundraiser door-to-door -door for charities. So do knocking doors, knocking 200, 250 doors a day to talk to four people... <laughs> Man. It's soul destroying. You just you feel. I mean, Harry Potter and the Dementors had nothing on you. It's like, but I was asking people. You, you were asking people for a five quid donation. I was asking them to let me tell them about their their life story and their retirement plans and all this stuff. And I'm a foreigner, so they didn't know if I was going to take all their money home or they didn't know anything about me. So I had to do that. Yeah. Built that business here in the UK. Um, did that. I still have that business. It still goes strong. I don't have to work in it that much. Um, I've got the consulting business and I'm a CEO of a law firm that only does mergers and acquisitions, but it all, it all bases itself around. And I talk about networking sucks. I think it's really bad. And the reason why networking sucks is so many people want to screw you. They want to take, not, not everybody, but there's so many people out there that want to be lazy in a bad way and just take stuff off of you and run. They want to take your ideas and take your clients and take this stuff and go away. And, and that, that really kind of motivated me to sit back and become the pr protector of the energetic over entrepreneur. That's really my thing is that, and that's what the lazy overachiever is. Let me teach you how to be lazy so you can protect yourself from people taking stuff from you so you can explode your business. I really, I really like the concept. I still have a couple of questions before we, we move into networking. I want okay. to know what has been, because uh, building multiple businesses uh, is not easy. It's not yeah. easy. Uh, and uh, what I want to know, what has been uh, your darkest business moment? The moment where you said, oh, my God, either I want to give up, kill myself, eat uh, a, a bag of chocolate, uh, a, a <laughs> whatever is going to be. What was your worst business moment? My worst business moment. So in 2000, I was partner in the firm that came over here from the States. 2009, global financial crisis, everything went AWOL. They, the, the firm went back to the States. They left us here. The new firm that took over was chasing us, trying to sue us in the exact same time. So I was trying to build a new business. They were keeping all of our income. My dad was in the hospital with E. coli here in the UK. My dad's American. He's here in the UK. And my, my best friend and secretary was, was dying of cancer in the same hospital. That was 
that was my darkest moment, I think. Just fam- family, business, Everything no Everything that could collapse, collapse at the same time. The only thing that I had was my own health and my, my, my wife and, and kids' health, but but my dad, every, my dad's still alive and everything else, but it was just, that was one of those where you're just questioning. How did you cope with that? I, I, I made it through, but I, did, I don't feel like I did it very well at that point in time. And that's why I try to protect people as much as I can. You can't, I can't protect it from a family member going down, but it's getting people excited and refocused. My big thing is energy, time, and focus. If you can take the energy that you have, because you're an energetic person, and get that focus. And I really think that that's where my ideas came from is I only had so much energy. If in that day, I only had one light bulb worth of energy. I needed to point it towards something that was going to make something happen that yeah. day, whether it was me feeling good or landing a new client, or I only had half an hour worth of energy. So I needed to turn it on like a high beam light and just, and then, then I was done because that's all I had in the day and then just go home and sleep. Cause you're just, it is just very, very difficult. I can I can imagine. Uh, I was actually having a conversation with a client recently, and uh, she's going through a very tough time. She's having a lawsuit, uh, and uh, things are not working out with her business at the same time. Uh, she had a great month, and now she's having a downtime in their business, uh, and uh, she's moving as well, and uh, all these things going on. And um, I think that that's a part of... Uh, the business journey i don't know i i had my down times too and i've just realized that it's just part of the game and when you have these moments you do what you can and it, if it was if it was if it was easy everybody would do it man absolutely if absolutely. it was easy everybody would do it okay but tell me tell me your best moment now tell me your best moment the moment where you said think about your business journey what has been the moment that you said, oh my God, I made it. This is the highlight of my business career. I think it's, it's, it's still to come, but I think the one that we've gotten to is I had a client, millionaire client. She called me up and she said, she said, BD, um, may tag or whirlpool. You know, I'm a financial advisor, so I was thinking, so you want some investment advice? You want some investment advice? Okay. So I, sell, I said, you know, Maytag, Maytag's owned by General Electric, so, you know, General Electric's a decent stock in, in Whirlpool, you know, their own, but I wouldn't buy those. She goes, no, I trust you so much, I want you to tell me what type of dishwasher to buy. So I had gotten to the point where I became a trusted advisor. You know, it's that trusted advisor. She was coming to me because I know so much about everything that I could tell her which dishwasher to buy. I mean, I've had great, I've had great client meetings and I've had all this stuff, but you just feel like crap. She trusts me so much that she'd call me instead of calling her kids to get advice on getting a dishwasher. That's cool. That, that, that means I've made it, you know, that's not yeah. my biggest yeah. land money, yeah. but it's, you know you're a trusted advisor when when this happens in fact Correct. i love asking this question because everyone has a different answer you know some people will identify in terms of financial terms other people maybe something small that happened that made the entire moment for them i remember for me it was when uh, i actually got paid my first 300 pound as a consultant awesome. i was 300 pound <clears throat> for 6 months of work <laughs> right Woo! so right now i'm like were you crazy in that moment it was my first time i got ever paid to do my consulting work i was willing to do anything and i remember i was there in the kitchen i if i could i was going to do backflips right there but now let's talk about networking now networking sucks Networking yeah. sucks. Why networking sucks? So you you mentioned that already. You have people that want to steal your energy and clients and all the things that you've built. Well, tell me more about that. So so tell me. So you asked me a question. Let me ask you a question. What, yeah. When when you go into a room and people, you're you're very prolific on Facebook and LinkedIn and everything else. When people know who you are, do they run over to you and want to give you their business card and ask you what what you can do for them and what are you doing next and things like that? Mm, not much. No. Really? Sometimes. They don't know who you are. Oh, okay. If they know who I am, yes. Okay, no. If they know okay. who I am, yes. They are They are happy. They come in and they say, oh, Simone, I've seen you. I see you on Facebook. I follow you all the time. Uh, and that's one thing. If they don't so, know. So, right, and you I, get those people them, yeah. chasing. You get, you get people, they come up to you and they, they want to be fanboys, but they're not really fanboys. They're just 
leeches. I call them black holes or, or people that, that yeah, take yeah, things off of you, right? Of there, are, there are many of them, yeah. There and there's many. lots of them. So so you go out and in, 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 a, in Birmingham, where, where we live here, is the same people go to almost all the same networking things. And they all they only have the same amount of clients, and they all go to the three letter, the, the all the three letter networking events, and they go to all those things, and you're just like, oh. and so they want to stand up, and they have to force a people piece of paper on you, or they they come up to you and they say, oh, I, hi, I, I'm B D Dalton, and, and someone here's my card, and it's like, oh, I don't even know what you, I don't even know if I like you yet, and they just come yeah. up and they just throw, so networking sucks, and then the caveat on that is as we're currently doing it. Because the, the real thing comes, and you'd have this with some of your groups and the things that you do, is that networking comes as, if you can systematically look at how you interact with people. Just like a sales funnel. Everybody has you, – you guys teach sales funnels and marketing mm-hmm. funnels. Yep. You have to have a networking funnel. You have to have a networking plan and a networking budget for your time and your money. And those two things are, are a necessity. I like because, that. Because when I – in 2010, when I came out, I could give you a list of paper, long, long list of paper of all the people that I had helped find jobs, um, help their parents move house without earning a penny, help them find jobs and clients and all these different things. And when I came out in my darkest hour and said, I need your help, silence. It was, it was literally you know, oh, I'd like to help you, but you know, it's the global financial crisis, and we're we're really busy right now. It's like, well, I wasn't busy when I I gave you help. You know, it's like, so I had to sit back and say, I've given all these people my energy, my time, my yeah. focus. How do I get it back? How do I measure that? So I had to come up with a system that that measured up how I was interacting with people and how much time I spent away from my family, away from the things I like to do. So you like basketball. I play water polo and golf and do some other things. So I, I, I'm time away from that to go spend it with a bunch of people that just want to take my business. Nah. So then it just became small focus groups of networking. It became captain's table style stuff. It became really methodical ways of networking so that I got the right people in the room that I could impact their life and they can impact my life. And then we can go out and spread the love around us from there. So networking sucks the way most people do it. So now what is then, uh, because uh, I, I can, I can resonate with this very much. Uh, I used to go to many networking events years ago. And mm-hmm. then for literally the past uh, three and a half years, stop networking completely. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have my a different way to get clients and uh, I found that uh, doubling down on creating events for me was the best thing. But recently, recently, it was just literally two months ago, I'm back on the networking scene with a very specific objective. So I like what you shared about having a very specific objective. So what's then the best way from your experience to network? To what are you looking for personally when you're going to a networking event? What makes you say that's the place where I should spend my time, my money, my effort, my energy so I can actually so, get something? So the, the first book I wrote was called True Gravity. It was all about the process that I went through to build, build the strategy around that. And you, first of all, you, it's like you talk about with your clients. You build your story. Then yep. you, find th- you find three people. Your three primary planets that want to share in that story and they'll want to be built around yours. So you're your business coach and, and help people turn around. And I've got a law firm here that helps people sell their business and go through partner strategies and things like that. Uh, you have an accountant. So you, you build your power team. But the story has to be similar and a similar niche client. So then once you've done that, then you spread your story and you become the, the go-to boys at a networking event or girls or, or team. And so you're the ones that go together and go out hunt in packs and bring in the story and create the momentum. And everybody else wants to come be with you guys. It's like, who's Simone talking to? Oh, that's B.D. Dalton. Oh, no, who's B.D. Dalton talking to? That's Simone. Okay, well, what do they do? They help people turn their businesses around and skyrocket them and do all this stuff. Well, let, somebody introduce me to them. That's... That's that magnetism that I call it true gravity is you create this inertia and you create the story, you create everything else that's happening there, but it takes time. As much time as you would put into the, the, the three letters, 
you could spend finding three or four people. And the thing that the British people don't do as well is they don't break up very well because you're going to move on from your primary planets probably three or four times in your in your business existence mm -hmm. because when you were when you were happy about your 300 quid there's somebody else out there that was happy with their 300 quid but then when you wanted to move to 300 quid an hour they might have been happy still getting 300 quid so you you've now moved from a, a, a Toyota lifestyle to a Mercedes lifestyle and they're happy at Toyota which is nothing wrong with that yeah. you just you just evolve and so they're either going to love on you or hate on you. And so then you move on. And then guess what? You get to your Mercedes level. And then guess what? You, you want to move up to Bentley's or you want to move up to private jet, whatever it is. And each, each of those vehicles, each of those vehicles have a different lifestyle around them and a different group of friends. And the only way you can get to that is if you're a Bentley friend right now and you want to be a private jet friend, you got to find a private jet friend and start building a story around a private jet friend. So mm -hmm. It's, it's spending that time concentrated on people and, you know, you're going to kiss some frogs, but when you make it through, man, it just, it just rocks and it resonates and people want to be around you and it's fun and you can kill it. So do you go to networking events or do you find networking events or do you have other ways of networking, I, like kind I, of a collateral I, I, networking? I go, I go to networking events. Right. But I go to networking events that have a client list that I want to meet one person or two people. Hmm. And, I and I take my friends with me <clears throat> because if we can do that hunting in pack, then those people that I want to talk to, we're either going to go hunting for them or they're going to find us because we're cool. I like that. I, I like that. that. That's something I've never done. Never. Really? No, not in packs. Like, or maybe I've done it, but I cannot... Not consciously. No, if you, if you haven't done it consciously, you haven't done it. Because right. it, there is, there's a game that you play. I've got games in the book that talk about how to play the game and have fun with it. Yeah. So you could, you could be the go-to guy. So everybody else introduces everybody else. So I introduce – this is Simone. Simone is amazing. He can do this with your business. He can help you do this. And he can help you fill all your speaking engagements. And then Simone goes, and this is BD. And you know what? He knows how to put the systems in place to do this, this, and this. And, oh, and then you say, oh, this is Bill over here. And Bill does this. this. This person's going, you guys know each other so well. Holy crud. And you go, but that's okay. We all really just love Simone. And so then then he goes back, what, why Why Simone? And then they go, everybody just pitch on you until uh, that guy's <laughs> off from you. I it's, like it. I like it. So tell, tell again, uh, say again the name of the book. I'm going to make sure we put in the show notes because uh, I'm sure that our listeners are like, okay, what's the name of the book? What's the name of the book? I want to buy it. I want to buy it right now. <laughs> it's called true gravity true, true like gravity. gravity perfect it's all of yeah it's, it's got a lot longer title than that but bd dalton and true gravity amazon you'll you'll, you'll get it, it. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 jeff bezos will make more money than me so and the web you can get it from the website and i'll, I'll send you a signed copy you know it's <laughs> jeff for, for every <laughs> anything not to give money to jeff <laughs> yeah i love jeff he's a good billboard for us but jesus <laughs> So I, I tell you, <laughs> 15 quid, I make three. Um, that's, a, that's a winning bet. That's slave labor is what that is. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Okay, so, so we I'm make sorry. sure actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link in the show notes uh, of not the Amazon link, but your website link. So then people can get that's, a signed copy. You're gonna that's pay, right. You're going to pay anyway. You're going to pay the same price anyway. So make sure you get the signed copy and also... Be I think it's cheaper on the website because I actually make money. <laughs> I think it's so cheaper than Amazon. Website. So BD is going to make some money. It's going to take me out for lunch. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> okay. as, long as, as long as you like McDonald's, but you're a vegan. So what are we going to do? Veggie do they burger. Do vegan? Yeah. Veggie burger, baby. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> so, now, let's, let's move on and transition uh, into lifting the veil so we talked about networking why networking sucks and actually how to do it the right way and now it's time to lift the veil it's time to lift the veil and something that you're doing in your own business can be sales can be something that you're doing marketing can be something that you're doing on operation maybe a tool that you use that actually makes the difference this is the holy grail that you have found <sighs> Okay, the holy grail. So things that things that I do that can make it so that you are productive and feel better. Go for um, it. 
So if you look at it overall, for me, it's measuring things. Everything needs to be measured. So if you're going to do your water intake, needs to be measured. Everything needs to be measured. And people don't measure their networking. They don't. They don't measure their networking. They have too many friends around them that say everything's okay. You need to find some people around you that are truthful with you about your marketing. Not negative. Just if they're going to give me a negative, I need them to point me in a positive direction. So you could say, you know what, that that thing, that marketing piece sucked. But but if you did it this way, I think more people would buy. You know that it's you've got to you got to find some no people, not just yes people, and and. I, I hate that. It feels really bad because I, I had a one of my coaches yesterday sent me because I have three different coaches. I have a business coach, a personal coach, and a speaking coach. So uh, Tiger Woods has five coaches. Why can't I pretend like I'm Tiger Woods and have a couple coaches? Um, Do you play golf? Uh, <laughs> I hit the ball. I have I have a golf membership and I hit the ball not very well. Um, my my golf partner would would. Cuss my name. I think BD is a cuss word in his. The, that's what says, <laughs> Why'd you do that? Um, but and 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 I come back to to one of my blog posts and one of the things that, that I that I sent there originally to to get on your amazing show was take a vacation monthly mm-hmm. because it, and I say take a vacation monthly. It can actually be weekly because let me ask you this, Simone. When when is the time when you're most productive in your business? When I'm relaxed. Relaxed. And what? How, when are you most relaxed? When I'm most relaxed. Um, when I'm on vacation. That's definitely one of the places. Mm-hmm. And after, after a good basketball session. That's good. And so when people go on holiday, when people go on vacation, usually they're doing all the work that they should have done up until that vacation point, right? Yep. So you're very busy. So, oh, my God, I've got to make all the phone calls, get all the, the appointments scheduled. And da, 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 da. So you're banging away on the phones. You're making all the phone calls. You're making sure the invoices are in. People are billed. You're ready to go. Then you go on holiday, right? <sighs> Relax. And then what happens? The last day of holiday? Oh, my God. i got to come back here and i got to do this, this, and this. And oh. So guess what? If you took a vacation every week, imagine how cool Thursday would be because you'd get everything done. And you could have Friday off because you'd get everything done. And yeah. then you go off for the hall. You go on the three-day weekend every week. You come back on Monday and you could bang away again. You're like, oh, three days off. I better work again. So you have these two catalyst days that just bang through your I, so, I like that. You know what? It's, it's happening right now because uh, I'm going to be away almost all the month of May. And uh, going to my wife, you're having a cruise around the Caribbean for our one-year anniversary. Woo. And... Uh, we don't we decided that we are not going to get the internet package on the cruise one because uh, i don't want to pay 20 quid a day for internet because i think it's very stupid it doesn't matter how much money you have it's very stupid yes and and secondly we really want to switch off and just enjoy our time and forget about the world and that's why right now I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, I got all these things I got to make happen. Book all my speaking gigs for uh, June, July, and uh, and September, and, and so on. So I agree with you. You just gives you this sense of focus. And uh, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna. You do. I'll, be, this I'll, out. I'll bet you'll make. I'll bet you'll make twenty percent more money. I know. I know you're a rich man and you make Bentley money, but I'll bet you'll make Bentley plus money. I'm gonna test this. I'm I'm gonna test this out, I, because you know I'm. Do, like, do the do the challenge and send it out to your listeners. Try to take one ho- one. Try to take Friday off every week well, and gonna, see yeah. see see where it goes. Because uh, one of the things that uh, I have personally, I am a I'm a workaholic. Like I I I I love work. I can, I I never stop. And if there is another opportunity, I always take that opportunity. I always say yes, yes, yes. And that's something that uh, one of my on my downside, on my shortcomings, which I'm aware of. Uh, but my wife, she gets so annoyed because yeah. sometimes it can happen that I promise to spend a day with her, and then someone invites me for an event to speak at an event, and I'm saying, oh well, can I go and speak at the event? And after a while, she gets really annoyed. And that's something that I, I personally had to look at myself. 
where am I saying yes to and where I'm saying no to. Yep. So I think that applying this philosophy in life, hey, yo, you learn and grow. I'm going to give it a go. You should. It's a great thing. It's an amazing thing. It's lots of fun. And it actually, you start to think about that's how you reward yourself. So I'm going to work my butt off on Thursday or whatever that day is. And Friday's all mine. Switch off the phone, go play hoops, and then take the wife out for dinner. Da, 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 da. That's that's the thing. It's got to be because that everybody and this is it doesn't matter. You know, you, you don't have bank accounts in a graveyard, man. So it's it is. I have I've I've had two thousand clients, and I've had a quarter of those that have died at some point in time in our relationship because of the wealth management. And not one of them on their deathbed has ever said not one. Not one has ever said, I wish I would have worked one more day. They say, I wish I would have spent time with my kids. I wish I wouldn't have been so whatever. I wish I would have learned how to play golf better. I wish I would have learned how to play bridge or smiled at the guy down the street. They never said, God, I wish I would have worked one more day. What would you say to someone who says, well, you know, there is all this culture right now of a hustling, right? You got to go there and you got to hustle. And, uh, you know, someone can look at you and say, well, it's easy said from you. You have already the, your businesses and you've already made it. Uh, you can do it. I can't. What would you say to them? They're right. If they say that they can't, man, then they're right. That's it's it's all about attitude. Everybody's got the same opportunity, no matter where you come from, and you just have to ask the right questions to the right people, and you don't have to learn where those people are. You just have to, you know. It's one of one of my good clients said that. You go to school, go to university, not to not to learn things. You learn how to look things up and deal with people. So whether you do that at university, whether you do that at school, you just need to learn how to find information because information is gold. Mm -hmm. And then you need to learn how to use that with people, not use people, use that with people. And that's that's how you, you do that. So hustling, if people say you can't, then they're right because they've already – defeated themselves so it's just yeah you're, you're probably right that's that's what i say yeah I, i can't do that you're probably right it's a matter of are you open to it or not if you say you can't you're automatically closed so correct now i'm curious to know about your uh, your schedule so what do you how do you apply that uh, in your own life do you work uh, four days a week or do you work and uh, maybe you take a longer holiday because i know I heard about this concept from uh, from someone else and uh, they were working for like two months at a time and then taking a month off. Um, how did, do you apply this to your schedule? So this year I will have a week in Madrid, uh, a week in Tuscany, three weeks in the States, uh, a week, another week in Spain and a week and a half in France. And I still have four companies so, so do you prefer to have uh, for example working a longer week and then taking a longer vacation or do you take uh, do you work a shorter week and take a longer vacation at the same time i'm really curious because some people here they we are we are really interested in how do you do it your your way because someone else can say well i like i want to test it out um i like if i'm going to unplug i need to go away for a long time If I'm gonna just if I'm gonna do a little bit of work while I'm away, then I like a short time. So right. if I if I'm gonna if, if so on my on my deep on my detox on my whatever in the states, I'm gonna be with my family. So I wanna I wanna unplug as much as I can. So unless I'm in the middle of a deal, I'll turn off the phone for the majority of the day. Maybe check messages once a day. That's it. If it's a week long, I usually have to stay plugged in. I don't, I don't fully relax. My wife hates that. Michelle hates that. But, <laughs> but that's just – I got to keep my finger on the pulse. But it's, it's, not, it's not healthy to have, have yourself fully, fully engaged all the time because yeah. you, you literally only have so much energy. No matter how, how much energy you and I think we have, we still only have so much. And it's, and it's hard to – the more we can concentrate that energy, the better off we are. Mm. I, I completely agree with you. Um, I personally find that for me it's very difficult, for example, to um, to be on holiday or to switch off uh, if I'm working. 
Like that's mm -hmm. it. I have I have modes. So if I'm working, I'm working. But however, when I'm on holiday, I don't even feel the need to check the phone. That was the weird thing. I wow. thought that so when I'm on holiday, I don't <clears> even <throat> want to check my messages. I don't even want to check what's going on. If there is an email, I don't I don't even check my emails. My assistant knows that uh, if there is something which is uh, like life or death situation, then she can contact me. <clears throat> yeah. Otherwise, my clients, everyone can wait for that week, the two weeks or the three weeks that I'm away. As long as, of course, I set up things up front to make sure that uh, everything like comes together. But when I'm on holiday, don't bother me. I'm That's there. Right. I'm there to chill. I'm there to relax. Uh, I'm there to play my basketball. Like the re we, we're going to this cruise, and uh, there is a um, it's the biggest cruise uh, that there is uh, in the, in the Caribbean. Uh, it's the yeah. biggest ship. And the, how my wife sold me on that was that there is a basketball court on the cruise. So that's how my wife sold me on that. Because uh, otherwise, I was like, why do we have to spend so much money to go on a cruise? We can go and have like a, a two month holiday with the same money we're spending on that bloody cruise. But she wanted to go there and there was a basketball court. So suddenly I found a new priority. <laughs> it, was, that's, <laughs> it was very weird. But it's, it's funny. So Simone, so in the, in the second book, in the Gross Sell and Retire, the more you can go on vacation, the more you can go on holiday, the more valuable your business is. Yeah. Because if, if you don't have to be in your business, the value escalates every time because the systems are in place, the marketing in place, the growth plans in place, your niche is in place, all the stuff that goes in there is in place. So if you can actually go on holiday and still get paid the same amount of money or more money, then you've got wealth insomnia or your money never sleeps, man. That's that's the big thing. I like I like the wealth insomnia. <laughs> I like that. Now, BD, it's been a, an incredible interview. I loved it. Uh, an absolute fun. You're great. Um, it's also been great meeting you at the, the books at the book award where we actually met in person for the first time. Um, question for you is how can people get in touch with you? How can people reach out to you? What do you have for them? Um, I have, I have a podcast too called grow, sell and retire. I'd love it if people go there and subscribe, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not as cool as you, but it, it, I have some fun and some tips. It's only 15 minutes, but it's just, just talking. You don't even have to stare at my ugly face anymore. Um, but they can go to bartdaltonconsulting.com and that's, uh, there's podcasts, there's blogs, all sorts of stuff. Um, some stuff tied in back to you. So there's links and things back and forth because I just like to, I'm a lazy overachiever. So if I can find cool stuff that you put out there and I can give a little bit of stuff to, to my followers and listeners and fans, then it just makes their world easier. They're lazy. And then once they know more about you, then they can go to you. So I just, you know, nobody has, nobody has the, the monopoly on best ideas. And, you know, we, I, I, you probably got a thousand business books like I do. And so it's just, there's one nugget in each of those books. Some of them might have five or six, but there's only one nugget in most of the books and each of us have a different one. So if I can pull all those down and make my, the people around me wealthy and wealth in the, on my website, you'll see it. It just says wealth equals time, wealth equals family. And it just scrolls through and it's different for everybody, man. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's that wealth insomnia. And so if it's spending time with your, your family, then that's, that's your wealth insomnia. It's, I, I get to spend all the time with my family. If it's driving Bentleys, it's money. You know, it's wealth is money. So it's uh, easy places. Just find it at Bart Dalton Consulting and you can find everything you want to know and things you didn't want to know about me. <laughs> and the things that you didn't want to know. <laughs> now, also make sure that you get the book. Uh, uh, you mentioned that the first one was, um, repeat again, the first one. The first one's true gravity. True gravity. True gravity. True gravity. This and the second one is gross sell and retire. Gross sell retire. You will have the links uh, of the books uh, from uh, his website, not from Amazon, but straight from his website. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> Forget you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing personal, Jeff. Uh, no, he's just rich, he's, he's richer than all of us will ever be. No matter how <laughs> cool we want to be, he's just richer than us. Forget it. It's, Okay. So make sure you get a book and uh, connect with the BD Dalton. Thank you very much. Thank but you, Simone. This is awesome. It's been a pleasure. I had a blast during this interview. Thank you very much.
Cool. Uh, now, if you're listening, uh, uh, maybe on iTunes or Spotify or High Art Radio, whatever you're listening, Google Play, or maybe you're watching this on YouTube uh, or Facebook, just make sure that you hit that subscribe button. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Hit that subscribe button right now. Perfect. Well done. And also send us a review. Let us know what did you enjoy the most from this interview with B.D. Dalton. What was uh, the biggest tip, the biggest nugget that you got from this interview and we will mention you on our next show whoa ho, ho. right if you want to mention make sure you do that thank you very much for listening or watching now i'm looking forward to seeing you to the next the next episode and remember that together we grow exponentially ciao <laughs>